Hi everyone. I welcome you all for this Nursing Wisdom channel. Today we are going to see about umbilical cord prolapse. The word prolapse means coming down or slipping forward. From this we can understand umbilical cord prolapse means the umbilical cord is coming down or slipping forward. Let's see the definition of cord prolapse. Umbilical cord prolapse is a condition in which the cord lies in front of the presenting port or umbilical cord descends alongside and the fetal membranes are ruptured. That means the umbilical cord is coming down and lies below the presenting port or alongside of the presenting port and the membranes are ruptured. Types of cord prolapse There are three types of cord prolapse. They are occult prolapse, overt prolapse and cord presentation. Occult prolapse, it is otherwise called as hidden prolapse. In this, umbilical cord descends and present by the side of presenting port. Overt prolapse, in this, umbilical cord present below the presenting port. Cord presentation, it is otherwise called as funic presentation. This occurs when the umbilical cord lies in front of the presenting port with the membrane still intact. The incidence of cord prolapse is about 1 in 300 deliveries. It is mostly confined to parasumen. Incidence is reduced with the increased use of elective CS in non-cephalic presentation. Etiology Malpresentation includes breach, breach with flexed legs or footling presentation, multiparity, high head, contracted pelvis, prematurity, multiple pregnancy, hydromnios, placenta factors includes minor degree of placenta previa with the marginal insertion of the cord, long cord, hydrogenic factors includes low rupture of the membranes, manual rotation of the head and version. Let's see one by one. Malpresentation Malpresentation like transverse presentation, it contributes 5 to 10 percentage. Breach presentation, unstable lie. These are all the factors affect the proper adaptation of presenting port into the lower uterine segment. This increases the chance of cord slippage and leads to cord prolapse. Contracted pelvis. In contracted pelvis, there is more chance of malpresentation that will affect the proper adaptation of presenting port into the lower uterine segment that will cause cord slippage and leads to cord prolapse. Prematurity In prematurity, baby size will be small, so more space inside the uterus will be available. Cord slip via that space and leads to cord prolapse. Multiple pregnancy in multiple pregnancy, mostly premature rupture of membrane will occur. That means water breaks before the head engage or settle into the birth canal. That will cause slippage of cord down and leads to cord prolapse. Hydromnios. In hydromnios, excessive amniotic fluid will be present. That will cause increased fetal movement. That leads to malpresentation and cause cord prolapse. Placenta previa with marginal insertion of the placenta. Placenta previa means low lying placenta with marginal insertion of the cord means the umbilical cord attached at the margin of placenta and long cord. These are all the factor increasing the risk of slipping down of cord leads to cord prolapse. Premature rupture of membrane. In premature rupture, the membrane ruptured before the head is engaged. That will cause slipping of cord leads to cord prolapse. Version. Manual rotation of head. Version used to correct malpresentation mostly from breech to cephalic. Manual rotation of head used to correct presenting port from face or broad to vertex. While rotating, that increasing the chance of slipping down of cord that leads to cord prolapse. Diagnosis Cord presentation This is diagnosed on vaginal examination when the cord is felt behind intact membranes. The diagnosis is made by 
feeling the pulsation of the cord through the intact membranes. It may be associated with aberrations found during fetal heart monitoring such as deceleration which occur if the cord become compressed. Occult prolapse, it is difficult to diagnose. The possibility should be suspected if there is variable deceleration or fetal heart rate pattern detected on continuous electronic fetal monitoring. Cord prolapse, in this the cord is palpated directly by the fingers and its pulsation can be felt if the fetus is alive. Cord pulsation may cease during uterine contraction which however returns after the contraction passes off. Hence, prompt USG for cardiac movements or auscultation for FHS to be done. Anticipation and Yearly Detection Internal examination should be done whenever the membrane is ruptured prematurely or during labor in all the cases of malpresentation, twins, hydromnios or vertex presentation where the head is not engaged. Surgical induction should preferably be conducted in the operation theater keeping everything ready for cesarean section. The uterine contraction may be initiated by acetocin if the head is not engaged prior to low rupture of the membranes. Internal examination both before and after amniotomy should be carried out with cord accident in mind. One should exclude cord presentation or occult prolapse in unexplained fetal distress during labor. Next prognosis, fetal, the fetus is at a risk of anoxia from the moment cord is prolapsed. The blood flow is occluded either due to mechanical compression by the presenting port or due to vasospasm of the umbilical vessels due to exposure to cold or irritation when exposed outside the vulva or as a result of handling. The hazards to the fetus is more in vertex presentation, especially when the cord is prolapsed through the anterior segment of the pelvis or when the cervix is partially dilated. The prognosis is however related with the half an hour the fetal mortality can be reduced to 10%. The overall perinatal mortality is about 50%. Maternal prognosis The maternal risk or incidental due to emergency operative delivery, especially through the vaginal route. Operative delivery involves the risk of anesthesia, blood loss and infection. Next management of cord presentation Under no circumstances should the membrane be ruptured. Medical aid should be summoned. The midwife should discontinue the vaginal examination in order to reduce the risk of rupturing the membranes. To assess fetal well-being, continuous electronic fetal monitoring should be commenced or the fetal heart sound should auscultated as frequently as possible. The woman should be assisted into a position that will reduce the likelihood of cord compression. Next scheme of management of cord prolapse. First need to assess baby is alive or dead by checking FHR. Next need to assess maturity of fetus that means gestational age is more than 37 weeks or not. Next need to assess cervical dilatation that means how much the cervix is dilated. In the case the baby is dead, there is no FHR, first need to confirm with USG. It is confirmed, then wait for spontaneous vaginal delivery or destructive operation should be done to deliver the baby. And in case of cord prolapse, the baby is alive, need to assess immediate safe vaginal delivery is possible or not possible. If immediate vaginal delivery is possible, need to assess the presentation vertex or breech presentation. If it is vertex presentation, can assess the delivery with forceps and windows. If it is breech presentation, the breech extraction need to done only by experts. Next, if immediate vaginal delivery is not possible or contraindicated, First, we have to provide first aid to relieve the compression from umbilical cord and once stabilized, need to go for definite management. First aid management, 
the aim is to minimize pressure on the cord till such time when the patient is prepared for assisted delivery or is transferred to an acute hospital if an oxytocin infusion is on this should be stopped at this time intravenous fluid and o2 by face mask is given periodically evaluate if a chore monitor pulsation of cord gently wrap gauze soaked in sterile normal saline solution around the prolapsed cord to keep the cord moist and warm provide physical and emotional support to the mother bladder filling it has been done to raise the presenting part of the compressed cord till such time that patient is delivered either by cs or vaginally bladder is filled with 400 to 750 ml of normal saline with a foley's catheter the balloon is inflated and the catheter is clamped bladder is emptied before cesarean delivery to lift the presenting part of the cord by the gloved fingers introduced into the vagina the finger should be placed inside the vagina till definitive treatment is instituted postural treatment exaggerated and elevated sims position with a pillow or bed under the hip or high trendelberg or knee chest position has been traditionally mentioned but may be tiring and irksome to the patient to replace the cord into the vagina to minimize vasospasm due to irritation after stabilization will go for definite management definite management is cesarean section it is the best treatment when the baby is sufficiently mature enough to survive just prior to making the abdominal incision the fetal heart should be auscultated once more to avoid unnecessary section on a dead baby the operation should be done quickly up to the delivery of the baby cord prolapse prevention discuss admission with all pregnant women with the transverse oblique or unstable life from 37 weeks of gestation cord prolapse occurring in hospital have better outcomes than those occurring within the community women with premature rupture of membranes and a non cephalic presentation should be advised to be admitted avoid arm where possible when amniotomy to induce labor is necessary the umbilical cord should be palpated and the head should not be dislodged amniotomy should be avoided if the head is high if an arm is performed with a mobile presenting port ensure arrangements have been put in place for an immediate emergency section should a cord collapse occur whenever a obstetric procedure is performed following rupture of membrane with high presenting port avoid any upward pressure on the presenting port treat high risk patient with continuous fetal monitoring during delivery i hope you got some idea about umbilical cord prolapse thanks for watching